two homes side by side here. We are told that uh, the people who were renting these two homes were believed to be commercial pilots who identified themselves as being from Saudi Arabia, according to the landlords, who were attending a course of study at a nearby flight school called Flight Safety International. These people were already said to be pilots, but said that they were taking another course there. Now, we are about to talk to one of the landlords who rented one of the homes to one of these two people. Can you tell us uh, how long this individual had been renting the house from you? Since June 10th of 2000. And I should say you are Paul Steimling. Thank you very much for joining us. And how much do they pay each month? 1400 What can you tell us about them? What did you know them? Who did you know them to be? Or your tenant? Just family men from Saudi Arabia that were here for a class. And they needed 15 months at this rental. And they've agreed to rent the property through uh, the end of August. And what happened uh, before their, the lease was up? They called me the last week in July and suggested they would need it at least another two weeks and uh, again last week to ask for another two or three days. They were to move uh, on the 17th this coming Monday. And how would you describe the man to whom you rented the house? Always polite, always a gentleman, paid his rent on time. As uh, far as I knew, family man with five children. What do you make of these uh, search warrants being executed at your home? Kind of shocked. I was uh, over here this morning and provided information regarding the leases to the FBI and could learn nothing. But, Did they tell you why they were looking at these homes and what connection there may have been? No, they didn't. To the attacks? No, they didn't. Did you ask them? I did. What did they say? That they couldn't reveal anything at this time. Did they show you any photographs of anyone? No, they did not. And ask you to identify them? No, they just asked me for a description. I gave that. What do you make of the situation? I'm <laughs> rather alarmed. It's a quiet little town. And I'm just a, a landlord that builds homes to rent. All right. They asked you to extend their lease, and they had the lease on your house until the 17th of September. That's roughly, correct. more or less. All right. Thank you very much. You're we can tell you this, Aaron, that uh, several hours ago, again, the FBI did take away someone uh, from that home. A law enforcement source identified that individual to us as an acquaintance of the of two pilots who may have been involved in the attack. It's our understanding that that person was uh, uh, driven down to FBI headquarters in Miami. We are in Vero Beach, and uh, we have no further update beyond that at this time. Uh, we do understand that the family from the second house moved out earlier this month. Okay, just help me on one thing. I, I may have gotten a bit lost in, in some of this. And I apologize. Uh, it's a little hard to hear. How many people in South Florida do we now believe are in custody and where do we believe they are? That's hard to say. We only know for sure about one person being brought in for questioning at FBI headquarters. Uh, we do know that the FBI has been spending all night and part of this day, most of this day, also looking at uh, different locations uh, in Florida. For example, uh, a couple of uh, apartments uh, they went to a restaurant in Broward County, Florida. They went to a home in Coral Springs, Florida, uh, a, an apartment that was rented by, in fact, someone who uh, sources tell CNN may very well have been one of the hijackers. They also spent time this day interviewing uh, some people at a house in Venice, Florida, on Florida's west coast. Uh, the owner of that home had allowed a couple of people to stay at his house. One of them identified as Mohammed Atta. And they also spent the day at, in Daytona Beach, Florida. Mohammed Atta, we are told by, the, uh, by law enforcement sources, may very well be directly linked uh, to the hijacking. And I, I'm afraid I know the answer to this, but very quickly, do you have any idea how the FBI has identified any of these people? Uh, to execute these search warrants. Have we seen the warrants yet to know what it was they were looking for? Anything you can help us with there quickly? The warrants have been sealed and therefore are off limits to us. However, I have been told since uh, late last night that one of the reasons they have been looking at some of these addresses from Broward County, Florida, several locations there, to Venice, Florida as well, is uh, because of ex examining the passenger manifest. Got it. And I was told when asked, because they were a passenger, and I was told no, it was far more pointed information by that, indicating 
that there were direct links to these people and they may indeed have even have been the hijackers themselves. Susan Nicework, Susan Candiotti in Vero Beach, Florida. Back to Washington, Judy. Well, Aaron, Susan's been telling us, of course, about the investigation efforts there on the ground uh, in Florida and elsewhere. And here in Washington, the folks coordinating the investigation, of course, are associated with uh, the FBI, the Justice Department. And for the latest on that, let's go to our justice correspondent, uh, Kelly Arena. Kelly, they're not saying very much on the record. What are you finding out? Well, that's right, Judy. Most of what we've reported has been reported thanks to a variety of sources. But we did hear from Attorney General John Ashcroft and FBI Director Robert Mueller today. To, uh, to a certain extent, they've confirmed certain points that we have been reporting. Number one, um, that the White House and Air Force One were definitely targets, um, that some of the hijackers were trained as pilots. Um, that they are working, of course, to recover the black boxes, that there are a number of individuals that law enforcement has ID'd that may have had something to do with the hijacking. They would not say how many, but they said that they have ID'd a number of people that they are looking for for questioning. Uh, there have been no arrests made, but uh, many people have been questioned. And, and as you know, earlier today we had been reporting that uh, sources were telling us that some people were in custody being questioned. And I think Robert Mueller, the FBI director, cleared that up today by saying that um, s many of these people had been detained on immigration hold. And so that's where sources were using the words in custody when it, it didn't seem to jive with not being arrested. Uh, they also say that leads in Boston, Florida, and Rhode Island were leading um, them to clues to the hijackers themselves. Uh, this is all that they would confirm. Those are the highlights of what they would confirm. As you know, Judy, m much of this has already been reported by sources, but it's nice to get official confirmation. Well, Kelly, in addition to what you're telling us there, we know there have also been uh, intelligence briefings for members of Congress. Have you been able to to pick up anything from that? We have. Uh, lawmakers said that uh, when they were presented with a list of names, they did recognize many of the names of the terrorists on the list. They wouldn't say exactly how many there were on the list or how many they recognized. Um, but that those names were gathered from cell phone intercepts and uh, passenger manifests. Um, they believe that they're from basically two countries, um, Afghanistan, which is to be expected, but also Iran. And Iran is unusual uh, in this case because it, they're usually not part of these types of terrorist operations. Uh, the lawmakers say that they are all but certain that it was Osama bin Laden masterminding the attacks. And they say uh, that they know that the the people were pilots because they actually had pilots' licenses, which uh, may help uh, in the investigation quite a bit if they're actual licenses that they can track down. One lawmaker uh, telling CNN that he is more alarmed than he was before, never realizing how many terrorist cells were operating in this country, Judy. And just quickly, Kelly, uh, what do they base it on when they say they're all but certain it was Osama bin Laden? Well, as you know, Judy, uh, we have reported uh, earlier, David Ensor uh, and I have reported that uh, there were there were phone, cell phone calls that were intercepted um, by the U.S. Uh, where there was uh, the organization Al Qaeda was mentioned, the the fact that two uh, targets were hit in the United States, um, and of course uh, there are there's just the speculation that the organization and the number of people and the funding needed to pull off this type of a coordinated attack uh, and doing it uh, with existing cells in the U.S. really does point to um, Osama bin Laden or a group that is associated with him. All right. Kelly Arena, our justice correspondent. Uh, someone else uh, among our correspondents who've been talking to people in the intelligence community, our national security correspondent, David Ensor. David, uh, you want to begin to pick up where Kelly left off. Well, Judy, on the intelligence side, the U.S. effort to figure out who was behind these attacks is involving thousands of people and uh, is going on both day and night. U.S. officials say they have specific information indicating the terrorists had links with the group led by Osama bin Laden, the accused terrorist mastermind. In closed sessions, the Senate and the House were given briefings. There had to be some brain. All right, there is, there is a growing concern that another one of the buildings behind us, and we're not precisely sure which one, may be on the verge of collapsing. Uh, we've got someone here on the phone to help us out here. Ingrid, uh, what, do you, what do you see, what do you hear, and what do you know? We were standing at our location as close as possible to the side of the uh, 
discharges former World, World Trade Center towers when police and military came running towards us and started evacuating us about, I would say, seven to eight minutes ago, telling the police to leave everything behind, that another building was about to collapse or implode. It was not quite clear at the time, which, it's not quite clear right now which building it is. Looking at it from, from my standpoint, I'm now about six blocks away from the side of the World Trade Center towers, and they have qualified as the building on the left on Broadway. I believe our cameraman here on our signal in the middle of all this, but it could some have pointed to the tallest modern black building um, in that area pointing to areas that we can't see from here saying it's starting to bubble. Okay. They have pushed all the way back, about several blocks back. We have left things behind at our original location. There is not much more that I can say, however. The sirens and everyone came running. It was absolute okay. pandemonium. And um, everyone is standing back. The police okay. saying, go, go north. You know, if you want to uh, save your life, get the hell out of here. Okay, Ingrid, just take a deep breath here. Make sure you're in a safe location. We now believe the building is one Liberty Plaza, which is in that uh, extraordinarily tight complex of buildings that surround the Trade Center. Um, uh, Ingrid, do you have any idea how big that building is, how many stories it is? Uh, I'm trying to get the information. I would say that this is uh, at least a 59-story building, uh, but that's really an estimate. Tall, modern, black. Um, if some people will So a, you're eyeballing this at 59 stories is what you're. I think what you're saying to me, and officials are telling you it's starting to buckle. Is that the word they used? President Bush and his advisors are still studying. Ingrid, did they use the word buckle? Well, we've lost uh, our, our producer down, and we want to get her. Frankly, let's just get her out of an area that may be dangerous to her and the people with her. Uh, but again, uh, officials are moving people away uh, because of the danger that a building, one Liberty Plaza, may be on the verge of collapsing, starting to buckle. We're keeping an eye on it as we talk to you. Um, you know, the one point to make here very quickly is that one of the reasons this this rescue operation is going so slowly is because it is so dangerous there that they just don't, it is so unstable that buildings can go almost in a moment's notice and they're not, if they can avoid it, lose anybody else. Uh, Ingrid, can you hear me now? Well, if she can, I, I can't hear her, so let me assume now uh, that she cannot. Again, rescue workers and anybody else has managed to make their way into the area being pushed back. Try to get out of harm's way as there is a danger uh, that One Liberty Plaza, roughly 59 stories or so, may be on the verge of collapsing. And that would be the fourth building to go down. As Gary Tuckman reported uh, to us about 15 minutes ago, uh, in, a, in 10 blocks on either side of the Trade Center, there is uh, extensive damage to buildings, some destroyed others uh, extensively damaged, some of those obviously perilous, and, and, uh, and, and uh, police and military people down there are trying to make sure that in this calamity nobody else dies. Uh, we will keep an eye on that, but we will move on briefly. Robert Gates joins us from Kansas City. He's the former, a former CIA director. Uh, Director Gates, are you able to hear me okay? Yes, I hear you fine. Uh, and uh, forgive me if I keep one eye kind of on the back of me here as I watch to see what's happening with this building. Um, have, you, have you heard from uh, your former colleagues in the intelligence community? Can you give us any sense of the kind of information they, they are picking up or at least the volume of information they are picking up at this point? No, I have heard nothing from them. I think they have uh, higher priorities right now, but I'm sure it's a wide range of information from a variety of sources, technical and human. And when we talk about technical for a second, this is our, uh, uh, the interception of phone calls and that sort of thing? Well, I, I think uh, everyone has a pretty good idea, but I think, frankly, as uh, the President and others have said, there's probably already been too much specific talk about just exactly what kinds of information they're gathering. 
mr gates i'm having a little